So hi everyone, my name is Samantha. Um, I work at CSC in Finland and I will be guiding you through the first 20 minutes of today's workshop. After that, I will give the word to Richard and Radovan who will guide you to the rest of today's, um, today's day, today's workshop. And I'll be showing you around a little bit how things are working in this workshop. So you may have noticed that things are already maybe a little bit differently than you're used to. Um, that you're watching on stream and we are here somewhere else, Hi. <laughs> uh, but you can still see us and you can still also interact with us. And for that, you have gotten a link in your um, email, um, either yesterday or when you registered to this workshop, uh, which starts with notes.coderefinery.org. This is our way on how you can interact with the instructors. And this is what I'm showing here on, on screen right now. So here you can find a few links in the top, for example, to our code of conduct. And if you encounter any issues, anyone's not being nice, anything um, that you want to report, then you can follow this link to get to a form that you can fill out to complain about it. Um, then we, like everyone who is registered has gotten this, this link. If you're not registered, you can still do so. And then in the registration confirmation, you will get this link to the notes. You can find the schedule here. And from the schedule, I can open it briefly. So this is the um, course page. You can also find the link to all the materials. So we are right now welcome and introduction and then the introduction to version control you can find behind these links. We'll also try to add that to the, to the notes here. We have here one suggestion um, for the screen setup. So as you may have noticed, we are sharing in this more portrait mode, and that is so that you can have other stuff right next to it. And I think, was it so that Twitch um, has this, what was it called, pop yeah. out? window or Richard, what was it? E, the, there's the air mode and there's also maybe a pop out window. Yeah. Yeah. So you mm. can have the the web browser with the stream on one side of your screen. And then if you want to follow, for example, in the terminal, or if you want to follow in VS code, or we will talk about that later, whatever you else need. And for example, also this notes you can have on the side. And uh, this document uh, we will share once in a while on stream, so please don't put any names or other identifying information on this. But other than that, since uh, you are not here with us in the Zoom room, but we are streamed to you, there is no danger of you appearing, appearing on the stream. Um, we have put some icebreaker questions here so that we all get used to the, use, using the collaborative documents and also to get to know how the weather is, wherever you are connecting from. And let's briefly go through how you can do that. So my window is very narrow. So if I scroll up a little bit, I will find a little pen symbol up here to the right. And maybe I can even zoom. Well, it doesn't really make it bigger. Uh, a little pen symbol upright for you. It might be somewhere here next to this Hedgehog logo. There is probably a I, a book and a pen symbol. It's always a pen symbol that you are looking for. And if we click that, we go into edit mode. And then we can already see someone is writing here right now. So this is how we can all now go here to the icebreaker question and tell us how the weather is where you are. And if you want some of the Emojis also work here. For example, we can add a sun with face to my Espo cloudy but warm thing. So yeah, please let us know how is the weather where you are. Oh, we have already a lot of people here joining from many different places. That is really nice. And then our second icebreaker question is, have you used Git before? So Git is um, what we will be talking about a lot this week. Um, it's not bad if you haven't heard about it at all. Please add a little O here in the end if you don't know what Git is. If you have used it before, you can add it to the yes. Or if you have heard but not used it before, to the no. So it's kind of a little voting system. 
bar graph. Um, and, and if you want, you can also add some more comments below here, like you've seen some people have already done. And then later, um, we will always add little sections here. And this is now the answer to Richard's question. Sorry, it took okay. a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, whenever we go to a next section, um, we will add uh, another header here like this, and then also the link to the materials. And then later today, we will also have exercise sessions where we will then tell you how long the exercise sessions are and um, what you are supposed to be doing in those exercise sessions. And just for you to know, there's many different ways on how someone can join this workshop. So some of you might be watching uh, it alone on stream and then do the exercises by yourself. And then there's other people who met either in the same room locally or in the same Zoom room to do the exercises together. And so we might sometimes say like breakout rooms or local rooms or these kind of things, just so you know what we are talking about. So let's go briefly also to the introduction materials here that we have collected. You can read through them also by yourself. We'll now go through them rather rather fast in the next 10 minutes, but we have also already done some of these things. So why are we here? So Code Refinery is basically building on top of more of the general coding classes. So we don't focus here on programming or writing code so much, but we are trying to support you to make your code that you are already writing more reproducible. And we have this really nice um, graphics here by Heidi Seibold that we are always using to also explain a little bit what the course is about, because all of our lessons that will come up in the next six half days, this and next week, somehow fit in these six helpful steps for reproducible research. So we'll take a look at how you get your files and folders in order, how to uh, also, or why also good naming for files, folders and functions is quite important, how to document your codes and maybe also your data, um, what are essential parts of a readme file that you can add to your code, um, what kind of metadata is needed, um, what are code comments and how you can uh, use them um, and how you can write useful comments in your own code. Then what we'll start with today, version control, what it is, why it matters, um, what it enables also. And then mainly next week, it's also a lot about stabilizing the computing environment and the software you are using. You may have heard about dependency management, containers and that kind of stuff. So we'll briefly look into that as well. And then also what goes into publishing your research outputs, like publishing your code in specifically here, like licensing, uh, what kind of licenses are there? Why, why would you want to add one? And so on. So this really covers uh, all the topics of these workshops. And we are here from Code Refinery. So Code Refinery is the name of the workshop. It's also the name of the project. Um, that runs these workshops and many others. We are Nordic, Nordic projects, and we teach these, um, let's say, more basic uh, scientific computing tools, and we are funded by the Nordic e Infrastructure Collaboration. And basically what we are, we are a community of research software enthusiasts from all over the Nordics and beyond. And you can find our website here, coderefinery.org, where you can find all kinds of things from the previous workshops, um, all kinds of materials also from other workshops and the partners and whatever else. You can also find how you can join us. So if this workshop is something that you enjoy um, and you would like to go further with this, you would like to maybe be part of the Code Refinery project, there is a whole page on how you can how you can do that. So we already talked a little bit about um, how these workshops, wor workshops work. Um, so we will have the live stream here. We will have the collaborative uh, notes 
for communication between you among yourselves and also towards the instructors and also the instructors with you. Sometimes we might add some questions to you in the collaborative notes also. I'll show them in the end um, once more. And then in week one, we will have the teaching happening here on stream by Radovan and Richard today. And then we will have exercises. And these you can, like I mentioned, uh, either do by yourself or in your team, depends on how you're joining this. In week two, there is no dedicated team exercise times anymore. So if you have joined a workshop some time ago, um, already that is something that we have changed. There will be a lot of interaction via the collaborative document. And if you are meeting with your team, we highly recommend to just meet after the workshop and talk through the exercises. And if you don't have a team, you can also join our bring your own code sessions after the workshop and ask us questions about these exercises if you want to do them on your own time. Then we plan on having a minimum of 10 minute break every hour and one, uh, one hour break at approximately lunchtime. And the materials will stay available and are always linked from this workshop page. The workshop page will also be available, so you will always have everything together. We will make the recordings available. You can watch them on Twitch still for a while, and then we also put them on YouTube. The collaborative document, we already talked about this. Um, I can show it again here. So it looks like this when you when you click on the link that was in uh, the registration confirmation email. And then you can find this little pen symbol to change into edit mode and answer our icebreakers here. First, what's the weather, where you're connecting from? And second one, have you used Git before? And if you want, you can also add some comments. And we already have someone writing here that you can also download the videos from YouTube later. So no worries if you have to leave during the workshop or if you cannot join for the whole day, uh, you will be able to, to catch up again. Sorry, I have to find the right tab again. Um, while you are watching, it might be beneficial to keep the notes in the view mode so that you can do by clicking this eye symbol Again, it might be here up to the right, or if you have a bit wider window, it might be up here on the left. Then you can still follow what's happening here. Like if someone writes, you still see it. Uh, but if we have a, a lot of people editing the document, it might be a bit more performant if most of us are in view mode. And then um, there will be exercises this week, as mentioned. And for that, so that you have a bit easier life after the workshop, we suggest to create your own course directory or course folder on your computer that you are working on. This way you have it all in one place and uh, you can then remove it after the workshop without having to find all the different, different directories again later. We already talked about the screen arrangement so that you can find a way that works for you. This is just our suggestion to have the theater mode for Twitch and then have the right side of your screen for the collaborative notes and your terminal or other tools that you need to open. Um, we suggest that your first priority always is to follow the live stream um, so that you can follow what is going on, um, what we're doing at every moment, and that's where the teaching is happening. Um, we know that this is a lot of different things to follow. Like we have the live stream, we have the collaborative notes, we have the lesson materials, and then if you're doing exercises, you probably have yet another window. So live stream, we feel is the most important one, then the collaborative notes, and then the lesson materials web page, we will be often sharing them on stream, so you don't really need to have them open by yourself um, during teaching session, at least. 
so uh, you can also have that close and really focus on, on the live stream. And for the collaborative notes, if you have a question, you add it to the bottom of the document and then someone will answer. It might sometimes take a moment for answers to, to get in there. So you also don't have to follow it at all times. You can also then go back in the break or during exercise session or after the workshop to check it. So uh, we have shared the notes document. This is also the document where you please let us know as early as possible if there is any major accessibility problem, meaning either you can't hear us, something is not visible. It seems like we want to share something, <laughs> but you don't see that. Uh, if we forget to have a break, uh, if there is an explanation um, that is unintelligible, please let us know right away so that we can fix it, so that we can make this a really nice experience for everyone. No one has to suffer through bad audio, for example. And also, since we have always multiple teachers, um, let us know if the, the volumes are balanced so that not one is very loud and one is very low. We try to do that always in the beginning, but things may change. So please let us know. Um, there might be mistakes happening on the on the stream, and we think that's a great um, possibility for learning. So you can also see how our instructors fix their mistakes. And uh, if there is something due to that that you then didn't understand, for example, then you can use these bring your own code sessions after the workshop to ask more questions about it, to ask more cl clarifications. We very welcome everyone to, to join in those sessions. You will also get another invite for those later. Um, we, we covered that if the collaborative document is going too fast, then just don't bother basically following it. Uh, you can always come back to it later. Uh, if you have any trouble, any technical issues, you can of course ask in the document in the collaborative notes, but it might be that we cannot solve them for you. It might be that you really need to have support from your local IT support. Um, so then it, it, we suggest to basically lean back, um, watch what's happening here, uh, figure things out with your local IT support later, and then do the exercises after that. We try to stay on schedule, but sometimes things go, don't go as planned. Things happen, cats visit, whatever. <laughs> um, and so it might be a little bit before or after time, but in general, we try to stay on schedule that we have published on our event page. So you can follow along there. Um, it might be that the collaborative notes are getting a little bit slow or things are going in wrong places or something. Usually that resolves itself after a moment often going into view mode and then going back into edit mode helps with that. But please also, um, well, yeah, it's hard to let us know if it if it happens, <laughs> but if it happens many, many times and in between you can write, then use that in between to let us know about it. We have some emergency backup um, things in place for that. If the stream suddenly dies, then probably Richard's computer has given <laughs> up or electricity has mm. gone down or the cat unplugged the cable <laughs> or something like that. Um, just stay around and we will resume in about five minutes, uh, which is pretty fast to get this back up, but we try our best. So it might happen. Um, don't panic. And then for the exercises, uh, we have sent out installation instructions on installing and configuring things. Uh, if you haven't done that, but still would like to follow the exercises, you can try that during the exercise sessions, um, or you just watch the stream and read through the things and do the exercises later. Mentioned already that it's okay to not uh, attend every day. Everything will be available. There might be cats visiting instructors, just enjoy the show. Um, and if you want to know more about this course because you really like it, 
um, we will have a workshop outro in the day, end of day six, where we'll give some hints on where you can go next. And then just so you know, we have over 300 registered participants for this course. So also the notes, um, there might really be happening quite a lot. And these are from over 20 different countries. And we have about 10 course coordinators, instructors and facilitators for this workshop that are working hard in the background behind also the instructors to support you with your learning by answering questions and keeping everything on track. And that also means we have people from all levels, from very programming beginners to uh, advanced programmers, and then also many different backgrounds. So please be respectful and helpful. Anyone can answer any questions in the collaborative notes if you know the answer. And sometimes it's actually good to have a few different opinions, a few different answers in there as well. Uh, we like to keep track of who is here. So if you are watching the stream and you don't have access to the notes, for example, um, and you haven't gotten any emails from us, then you probably haven't registered. Um, we would like you to do that so that we can keep track on who is here. This will help us with future funding and so on. And you will get access to the notes, which is also quite nice. If you want certificates, we will mention this also in the in the outro, how you can get that. There is also a link on the work workshop page for that. We, as a community, um, we hang out um, in our Zulip chat, and you can find that link to that on our website, or also behind this link here. We have a lot of manuals available if you want to run your own code refinery workshop or want to get more involved or get to know what we're actually doing behind the scenes. And we are on all like social media platforms on Mastodon, Twitter and LinkedIn. And if you like this workshop or also not, uh, <laughs> share with your, your colleagues that you are here and what you are learning. We're always happy to, to read the different views also. And now I'm already a little bit over time. I'm very sorry for that. I will give over to Richard and Radovan to start with uh, the introduction to version control. And I will add this also in the notes. Good. Or someone I'll take the screen from you. Yep. yep. Thank you and have okay. fun. Thanks for the intro. See you. Yeah, thanks so much, Samata, for this very nice intro. and. Hello, everybody. I'm Radovan. Hello from Northern Norway. Um, it's Isn't it cool that we have people joining from so many different places? Some of these places make me really jealous to be <laughs> to be at. Um, so I'm Radovan Bast, working at the University of in Tromso, um, doing teaching and support in research software engineering, computing, programming. And I will be teaching today and tomorrow, and with me, Today is Richard from Alto. Hello. Yeah, I'm also basically a research software engineer and have been around here quite a while. So, how do we start with um, yeah. motivation or 